We're here at Sebring and we had to come by the Zenith space because there's something going on here. It appears they're taking parts and making bigger parts out of them. What's going on here? I'm Dan Johnson talking to Roger Duper, who knows all about this endeavor. What's going on here, Roger? Well, we, we're putting on a rudder workshop. Uh, back at the factory, we have a rudder workshop once a month. It's a two-day course. You build a rudder, and you learn all the ins and outs on how to build the, the, the airplane from the rudder. So we brought the rudder workshop to the Sebring show this year. Very cool, and it looks like you got quite a bit of participation going on here. There's quite a little buzz of activity even times I pass by it. Oh yes, we're building seven rudders today. Uh, we're building the 750 Cruiser, 750 Stoll, 701, and the 650 rudder. And who is we doing this? Are these just people to walk up and say, I'd like to try, or do they pre-register? Because you do this on the shows, and that's what we're trying to identify for you here as well. Can people be part of this? Uh, we had a pre-registration, because we had to ship all the rudder parts and everything. And they so had you had to, to know how many people exactly. were coming. I see, okay. Okay, okay so, how, so how does someone do that? Now, they already did it for this show. The next time you go do this, how do they go about saying, hey, I'd like to be part of that, what I saw in that video? Well, this has been an excellent, a big success for us, so I know we're going to do it at other shows. Just go on our website, uh, follow us, or give us a call at the factory, and you can sign up and, you know, for the next show. Can you really learn? I mean, a rudder's a fairly simple piece relative to the whole airplane. Can you learn anything good from that, and what do you learn? Well, the rudder is the same example as building the wing. You still have the spar, you still have the ribs, and you still have the skin. The advantage to the rudder is it's just not such a big section like the wing that you need, you know, a 12-foot table. All you need is a, you know, 4x4 four four or 4x6 four table. Yeah, you basically uh, didn't take a whole lot to put a bunch of tables together here for people to do this, I'm guessing, and, and that's enough to do the whole runner on. Oh, definitely, yes. Now, how long does it take and how many people are working at doing one rudder? Well, one rudder is uh, typically one customer, but okay. most of the time he'll bring his wife or his kids to help along building the rudder. And most of the time it takes, you know, 10 to 12 hours to finish a rudder from start to finish. Okay, you know, so we'll in take a couple of days, like you said. Then. Right, and we'll take them for a demo flight, and we'll chat, and we'll discuss the airplanes, too, in the meantime. So after that, they could go, well, all right, I wasn't sure if I could build an airplane, but now that I've done this, are they going to say, now, that doesn't address things like wiring and painting and other right. skills that are needed, but... Is it enough to give them a clue about their ability and an average person's ability to build an airplane? Definitely, definitely. You really learn hands-on because we are not building the rudder for them. The customers are hands-on building that rudder 100%, so they'll know when they leave the workshop that they can complete and finish the rudder. All right, so they're doing it all themselves. These people that I see working right now, these are some examples of... Yes. These are not staged people out of your factory. I oh, no. already know this cold. These are people that are going, okay, let's see, how do I do this here? And if they have a question, we're right here to jump in and help them and show them different techniques, the little shortcuts and, and how to read the manual, read the blueprints and uh, finish that rudder to start building either the rest of the tail or maybe even the wing section. So let's say I signed up here and I went, okay, I, I want to do this. Um, do you start off with a little orientation first or do you just say, here's some parts, call us when you need us or how does it work? Um, we do have an orientation the first day, which was yesterday morning and everybody you know, explains who they are, where they're from, and then we go uh, explain a little bit about the rudder, the tools, basic tools, and then we just say, hey, jump in, open the manual, and start pulling parts and drilling. Now I see a gentleman right here, looks like he's sort of finishing the edge with a tool. Did he have to bring that tool or did you supply all those things for them? We supply all the tools and that's so what we do. So they just show up Exactly, then. it makes it a lot easier, and most of the tools that we're using here, we do sell as a tool package back ah, at our factory. Okay, okay. So they don't have to go out and source these things by themselves, although I'm sure they're just standard tools. But, right. you know, the one he's got in his hand, I'm not familiar with, so that's one to, uh, to refine that edge a little bit. Correct. It's okay. called an edge deburring tool. Okay, there you go. So And so whatever tools they need, and I see a lot of Clecos. That's for people that don't know what they are. That's the little, the little pieces that are sticking up out of that rudder right there. What do they do? What's their purpose for those that don't know that? They're a temporary fastener. So what you do is you're going to drill your hole first, and then you're going to click it with the proper, proper size click for whatever hole you're drilling. And then you're going to take that section apart to deburr it, re it, and then you can start riveting it. Okay, and the drilling in the first place. I don't see jigs and things that say how to drill it. How does one know how to do that? Well, that's not. Nice I'd be thing. nervous about making that first drill into a brand new part and go, what if it's not the right hole? Now I got a hole in a part that I don't need. And that is very hard to start these guys. You know, the first hour until they drill that first hole is very challenging. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's the nice thing about our airplanes. You, all you need is a nice flat table. There's no special jigs, fixtures, anything that you need to finish the airplane. I don't, yeah, I don't see any of those parts. So are they laying out a paper on top of it or how do they make that first hole? It makes them a little nervous. Well, uh, they're just uh, drilling uh, the, the rib to the skeleton on the, the workbench. 
and uh, you know there's no templates or anything and they don't need the paper to keep it all clean okay and, uh, great so a couple of days these folks will uh, will they go home with their runners uh, yes uh, so they're gonna, they're gonna own a runner when they're done exactly too, huh? most okay. of our customers are here are from Florida so they'll take their rudder home we do have a few we have one gentleman who brought his family from Argentina oh, wow. and uh, definitely he can't take his rudder back on the airline so we'll <laughs> take it back with us and we'll ship it either with the rest I of the see, kit okay. or something so like that. So people can come from anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country to one of these events that you'll have mm -hmm. and if they can't manage to get the part home because when they're done a rudder may not look that big until you actually have one in your hands and then exactly. they get kind of large so you couldn't just take that on the airline with you right they'd probably give you a kind of a wrong look there i'm <laughs> thinking so excellent stuff okay let's go back then to the website and how people can find out that and you said they can call too so give us both a website and a phone number roger we'll put it up on the screen for folks okay well you can either call the factory which is 573-581-9000 or you can go on our website which is zenithair.com and we do have another website at zenith arrow that we have a lot of information on there too Okay, and they can find out there, there'll be an easy way to get to where they find out about, I want to participate in one of these wherever you do it next, if it's convenient to me, how can I find that out? That's where they can go. Exactly. Great stuff. A lot of information about Zenith Aircraft and Zen Air and the whole brand of uh, airplanes that came out of the fertile mind of Chris Heinz many years ago. Uh, you can find all that on bydanjohnson.com along with lots of other affordable aviation. Thanks for joining Roger Dupert of Zenith and myself here at Sebring. Don't miss the 15th Annual Sport Aviation Expo at the Sebring Regional Airport, January 23-26, 2019. The Sport Aviation Expo provides the opportunity to review aircraft and do demo flights. The event features light sport aircraft and includes kit planes, powered parachutes, trikes, gyros, amphibians, drones, ultralights and electric powered aircraft. With over 150 different aircraft on display, including the Zenith line of experimental light sport aircraft. Sebring is a show where attendees can spend time with factory reps, checking out their dream plane, hanging out in the forums for the day, or just passing the time hanger flying with friends old and new. There's also a long list of great speakers with talks ranging from informative to inspirational. Again the dates for the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo at Sebring Regional Airport are January 23-26, 2019. Look forward to seeing you there.